Hello, and thank you for joining us. This week, we travel from California to Texas, traversing the extraterrestrial highway, exploring the petrified forest, and kayaking on the Santa Rosa Lake in New Mexico. We are Flight of the Crow's Wing. We spent nearly two weeks camping in our daughter's backyard. We did maintenance on the truck and the trailer, and we helped them with their projects. Like installing these pretty herb planters. Most of these projects we didn't bother to photo or videotape, but we did take photos and some video of their project for building a bed platform in their Lexus. Another corner, hopefully it'll turn out a beautiful corner. Ah. Wait, wait, don't make evidence of me working on things. You are working on things. Don't hide. Mark can never know that I know how to work on things. I won't tell her. She'll never see the video. I'm sure she doesn't subscribe to our YouTube channel. No, I'm talking about Mark. <laughs> oh, Mark? Yeah, he doesn't watch. He'll never Perfect. know. He'll never know. Every time I go there, I'm like, Mark, something's wrong with my car. Can you look at it? <laughs> I won't tell. <laughs> Carbon burns. <laughs> Carbon burns. <laughs> Oh, you know, this is Sparta because I can just push you off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this platform will allow them to sleep in their vehicle on their camping trip up in Oregon later next month. Leaving California, we were heading indirectly to Kingman, Arizona. We took Carson Pass over the Sierra Nevadas. Our first night we spent in a dispersed site in the Toyabe National Forest. We found this site on the iOverlander app. Our next stop would be Rachel, Nevada, but we had to make a quick detour to visit a dinosaur. Correction, not a dinosaur, a reptile. Along the road to Tonopah, we saw the signs for the Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park. In a conversation with our son Christopher, he told us that this was the largest marine reptile fossil found in the world. Unfortunately, the building housing the fossil was locked up tight and we were forced to stand in the cold and wind and peer in through the windows. Afterwards, we went down and checked out the old mining town. Amalgamation. What remains of the town of Berlin dates from the late 1800s. Rusty stuff. And more rusty stuff. And they even have some dusty stuff. The assay office is largely intact, and so is the stage station. In the town of Tonopah, we came across this. Hey, I think I know where we should stay tonight. Where? The Clown Motel! The Clown Motel! <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> ah. uh, well, it's Nevada Highway 375, and it is known as the Extra Terrestrial. 
terrestrial highway. So, we're gonna see aliens! Terrestrial highway. Gotta go take a picture. It was getting late in the day, so we decided we'd stay in the super fancy digs of the little alien. Alien. <laughs> Alien going to get an a, alien burger, an alien burger, and a milkshake. Mm. The food was inexpensive and actually quite tasty, or maybe we were just really hungry. I don't know. After a night in Rachel, we'd be visiting the Kingman, Arizona area. But first, we had to visit the black mailbox. Sadly, today there were no Area 51 employees to divulge any secrets, but maybe next time. And the Alien Research Center. In our search for a campsite in Kingman, we found a truck camper fixer-upper. And then a cozy campsite. On Google Maps, Elizabeth found the location for an abandoned mansion and we had to go visit. I think it's a good thing we parked the truck. Yeah, it's a little rocky. It was an easy hike with plenty to see along the way, including our first horned lizard. Yeah. And a strawberry hedgehog cactus in bloom. The Gold King Mansion opened in 1929 and closed not too many years after. We could tell you more information about it, but somebody shot up the sign. Not Gold cool. Gold King Mansion. It's a mansion, baby, a mansion. I think technically it doesn't fit the definition of mansion, being that I don't think there are enough rooms, but you know used by the Gold King Mine Company to schmooze people. This is really cool. Last to work. Scope damage. We stayed in Kingman long enough to get our second coronavirus vaccine, and it was time to move on. We moved from Kingman to a campsite not far from the Petrified National Forest. This campsite was beautiful but very exposed to the wind, but it was right above the banks of the Little Colorado River, made for a pretty scenerific place. We found this one on the iOverlander app. We 
spent the next day visiting the petrified forest, hiking its many trails, and viewing the fossils in its museum. Desmatosuchus. Desmatosuchus. Dimorphodon. That one's easy. Oh, look, he's got eye bones. There were more petrified trees here than you could shake a fossilized stick at. Some of the longest trees were almost 180 foot long. Those were some big trees. They were alive during the Triassic Age. They were only a few degrees above the equator when this was part of Pangaea. The Puerco Pueblo is a 100 room village that lies on the Puerco River. At its peak in 1300 AD, it housed over 200 people. This site is the home of several really cool petroglyphs, including this one of a crane eating a frog. The original Agate House was an eight-room pueblo. It was used by the Native Americans, and it's entirely built out of petrified wood. So would you call this a wooden house, or would you call this a stone house? I have no idea what he was saying. So windy. Our next stop would be the Santa Rosa Lake State Park we arrived in the midst of a huge rainstorm. This one we found with the help of the Ultimate Campground apps, one of our favorites. Don't be the biggest, don't be the biggest, don't be the biggest, hashtag teardrop life. It was pouring down rain, so we had to cook inside. Potatoes! Potatoes. The next day, while trying to dry out, we worked on doing some minor repairs, like resetting the slides on our pots and pan drawer, and re-greasing and tightening the screws on the door latches. Then the sun came out and it was time to play. The water levels of Santa Rosa Lake was so low that the boat ramp was closed to all motorized boats, but luckily it was still open to kayaks and canoes. The boat ramp is so long, it's as much a hiking trip as it is a kayaking trip. Going back to get the truck is going to be work. <laughs> How far back is it? It's parked at the closest spot but that's still on the other side of the outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> We're only about 30 feet under where the water should be. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> other than some fishermen on the shoreline, we had this lake all to ourselves.
It was great to be back in the boats again. We even searched the shore for treasures and found this lovely thing. We saw pelicans and a turkey vulture, or two or three. And lots of birds feeding in the mud including some spotted red shanks and some Wilson's Farler ropes. Several large red ear sliders. And these beautiful American avocets. Softshell turtles outnumbered the sliders by at least four to one. Continuing our journey east, we crossed into Texas and stayed at the McBride Canyon Campground at the Lake Meredith National Recreation Area. We found this one on the Ultimate Campgrounds app. It was a primitive site, but it had a pavilion and a pit toilet. Luxury. And that night, we celebrated Cinco de Mayo with our alien tequila. The next day, we stopped in Wichita Falls to see a man about a travel trailer. After many hours of using our wheeling and dealing skills, we managed to get it for a normal price. Exhausted from that work, we spent the night at the LBJ National Grasslands not far away and slept amongst the cattle. This was another find on iOverlander. It was basically just a pull off along a forest road, but that was good enough for us. This local bovine stared at us for a long time. We dubbed him the Staring Steer. We are surrounded by ungulates. Another few hours of driving got us through Dallas and into the Sam Houston National Forest. This put us close to Livingston, where we planned to run some errands and finalize other plans for our next stage in our adventure. It's springtime here, and everything's green, and the flowers are all abloom, and the birds are all a twitter. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, stay safe, and remember not to forget where you parked your rig. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more.